Some people think science and education started after the Renaissance. It is true that after the Renaissance, there were a lot of universities open, a lot of books were written, and they wouldn't set fire to the people that had new ideas. But many years before this, science and astronomy was booming in the Middle East. From 2200 years ago, civilizations back then were always trying to study the stars. And in order to do that, they always tried to build different tools so they can learn more from the sky above them. When astronomy started to take off was when Islam started to go all around the Middle East and scientists wanted to create a tool so they can find where the Mecca is. At this time, the Abbasid Caliphate is in power and they're really motivating scientists to create a tool where we can easily find the Mecca from all directions. At this time, a mathematician by the name of Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim al-Fazari created a tool and named it the Astrolabe, or in Arabic, Ustorlab. When this tool was first created, it was amazing because they could easily use it to find the Mecca and with the help of sunrise and sunset, they could determine when it's time for prayer. When we get to the 10th century, a Persian scientist really cracks the code with the Astrolabe. His name was Abdul Rahman Sufi. He said you could do thousands of different things with this tool. Astronomy, astrology, finding ways, finding directions, the time of day, the time of prayer, and many, many more. We have to say, that Sufi was one of the first ones to use this tool to do other things, especially studying stars. Before then, they only used it for religious purposes. In our previous videos about space, we said that Sufi was the first person to see the Andromeda galaxy, which he called a small cloud. When you look at the ancient astrolabe, you see that it's a work of art and engineering. Just because it's an old tool, you really can't underestimate it. And you can even go as far as call it an ancient computer. In the 11th century, the astrolabe enters Europe towards Portugal from Northern Africa. And in the beginning, they would build this tool with wood, but obviously it would not be as accurate and it would break easily. And that is why they started building them with brass. Brass is not an element itself. It's a mixture of zinc and copper, and it's a very good metal for something like this. When the astrolabe was built with brass, it got much more accurate because you could build it more precise than wood. In the beginning, it entered through Portugal, and after that, it went all through Europe. When this tool entered Europe, out of the handful of scientists over there, they were very impressed with the tool that the Middle Easterners designed. And that is why the scientists in Europe considered this one of the most important tools of the Middle Ages. And with the help of this tool, they could study and figure out a lot more stuff about the skies. How does the astrolabe even work? It's a very complicated looking piece. You have to imagine that this is what you can see. And nowadays, that's considered the observable universe. But back when this tool was designed, the observable universe was the sky you could see with the naked eye. In the middle of the astrolabe, it's us. And this white line is the horizon. The line above us is directly above. And this half a circle is the horizon we can't see. But with the help of this tool, we can see where it is. The white indicators you're seeing points to different stars throughout the field. Right now, with the help of this tool, you have the skies in your hands. You know where different stars are and you know what direction is where. This tool might seem ridiculous to you guys nowadays. Back in the day, farmers didn't have calendars. 
They also didn't have watches, so they had to have a way to figure out when to plant their goods. They can't plant it too early or too late, so even farmers needed the astrolabe. These are the different parts of the astrolabe. The ring, and the main part is the throne. Why does this tool have a ring? So you can hang it accurately. When you hang it, it could be as accurate as possible. And at this point, the measurements can be more accurate. If you hold it in your hand, it's not going to be as accurate. You have to know that this is an actual astrolabe and it's from more than a thousand years ago in the Middle East. And you might say, where is it now? Right now, it's at the British Museum. This is many of the historical Middle Eastern pieces that's in the British Museum and it's complete. It comes with five different fields and you could swap out the astrolabe. You can swap out different pieces and you could tell which part of the world you are, the more south or north. This smaller ring in the middle is known as the Riti and in Arabic is known as spider because of the pointers that point to the stars and it looks like spider legs. Every part of the astrolabe is connected to the middle and that's called the pin. The back piece of the astrolabe has a piece called a ruler. Like for example, if you want to know what time it is, you have to use the ruler. Imagine the astrolabe is hanging and you point it towards the sun. So it's vertical to the ground and it's pointing towards the sun. When it's pointing towards the sun, the sunlight goes through two holes in the ruler. And if you hold the hand at the other side, the sun should beam on it. When the sunlight perfectly goes through both holes, you're pretty much finished with the back side. And now you have to go to the front side and match the Riti or the spider piece to the back ruler. At this point, it will tell us the time and the stars that are in the sky right now. And that's because when the sun is out, you can't see the stars. Every culture has their own type of astrolabe, but the Middle East really refined it the most out of everyone else. You could find the angle of the horizon. You can find where different stars are at different times. You can find distances, and you can even know what season it is. In some cultures, geomancy and astrolabes are talked about together, but it seems like they have nothing in common, and geomancy is not really scientific. 